It's common to want to make several Swift UI views using a loop. For example, you might have an array of names and you want to turn all those names into a whole bunch of text views. We have an array of menu items and want to make each item into an image. Swift UI has a special view type just for this purpose called for each, which can look over arrays or ranges and make views from them. What will happen is it'll run a closure once for every item it loops over, passing in that current loop item. For example, you want to count from zero to 100, it'll run the closure with zero, then one, then two, and so on. For example, here we've got our form. I might want to say, I want to have 100 rows inside here. I can say for each zero up to 100 with a number coming in, and then write text row number, like so. When that runs in the preview, you can see a whole bunch of scrolling rows counting from zero all the way up to 100. Remember, up to is excluding 100. There's a 99 on the screen. Now, because this for each passes closure right now, it's running again and again and again. We can use shorthand syntax if you want to. We can remove number in and just write row dollar zero and get the same result. Now, for each is particularly useful when working with SwiftUI's picker view because it lets us show various options for users to select from. To do this, we'll make a simple SwiftUI view here. It has an array of possible student names shown on the screen has an at state property to store whichever one's currently selected, then has a picker view asking users to select their favorite using a two-way binding to the state selection. Then we use a for each to loop over all the possible names, turn each one into a view. First things first, we'll say, make our array of names up here. Uh, let students be an array of Harry, then Hermione, then Ron. And then for state, we'll call this one selected student. And I'll set its default value to be Harry. Now we'll have a little, uh, let's do a navigation stack with our form inside. I have a title saying uh, select a student, like that. Then we've got our form. And inside the form now will be a picker saying, select your student with its selection value bound to dollar selected student. Inside there, we'll loop over our names array. We'll say for each students ID of self text dollar zero. Now, that's not a lot of code in there, but it's worth clarifying a few things. This student's array doesn't have to be marked at state. It's a constant value here. It's never going to change as the program runs. This selected student property does start with the value Harry at our initial selection, but it will change, which is why it has at state before it. This picker has a label saying select your student. It shows users what this thing means. It's not always visible, but it is right now. And it is visible for things like voiceover, screen readers that read out what your thing says or does on the screen, folks who are blind or partially sighted. This has a two-way binding as dollar selected student, which means it'll start showing Harry by default, but as the value changes, it'll update the string automatically with a new value that's selected. Then inside the for each, we have our text view here. So we make one text view for each student in our array. The only confusing part in here, the only really weird part is this for each loop, where I say id backslash dot self. This loops over the students array. You know, saying for each students is fine. So you make a text view from each student. That's not surprising. But this id backslash dot self part, this is important. This exists because SwiftUI needs to be able to identify uniquely every view on the screen which is which all the way down. So we can spot when things change. For example, if we rearranged our array, so Ron came first, then Harry, then Hermione, um, SwiftUI would move its text view around. It would understand, okay, this picker is no longer not Harry, Hermione, Ron, but Ron, Her Hermione, Harry, right? So we've got to tell SwiftUI how can it identify each item uniquely? How can it tell which string is which? What about our string makes it unique? 
Now, if we had an array of structs, we might say, oh, um, the title of my struct as a property is, is unique or has a unique ID integer or whatever that is always unique. Here though, we have a simple array of strings, Harry, Hermione, Ron, and the only thing that's unique about a string is the string itself. Harry is not Hermione, Hermione is not Ron, they're different things. And so, when we make our for each loop down here, we're telling Swift UI, please make many, many views from this array here, and it wants each one to be unique. And it says, okay, what makes them unique? What makes each item unique? We just say, self. The strings themselves are unique. The strings themselves are their own unique identifier. This does of course mean if you had multiple strings that were the same, you had like Harry, Hermione, Harry, Harry, Ron, Hermione, for example, duplication, then you'd hit problems. It won't work very well, but here it just works fine. We'll look at other ways to use Forge in the future, but that's enough for this project. This is the final part of the overview for this project. And so it's almost time for you to get into some real code. If you want to save the examples you've made so far, please do copy them somewhere else now. When you're ready, I want you to put content view back to the code I'll show you now, the simplest possible starting code. We'll just say here, uh, text, hello world. Like so. And with that, our project's clean again, we're ready to start for real.